Hello guys, welcome back to my world of fragrance. I thought that I would sit down with you today and do a good old fashioned video where I just talk about fragrances that I'm currently loving, grabbing for, reaching for. It's been a while since I've done one of these videos and it's kind of how my channel started, was me just sitting and sharing what it is that I like to wear. So I know that this isn't a makeup channel or anything, but I wanted to just show you because if you know me by now, you know that I'm a sucker for packaging. Look at my lipstick. It's a Guerlain lipstick. I just wanted to show you. <laughs> for those of you who love good packaging, it comes with a mirror. It's so femme fatale. Um, anyway, so let's go on to the fragrances that I have been loving. As always, if you'd like to see a full review of any of these fragrances that I mentioned in this video, then please leave me a request down below. Otherwise, I'm gonna go through them in a fairly shallow way because I do want to show you as many fragrances as possible. So first off, we have Bois d'Achai from Maison Crivelli, which is a fairly new fragrance house. I think they launched in 2019. And all of these fragrances are very signature scent appropriate. They're easygoing, they're French, so they're, you know, relaxing, nonchalant, except they follow the classic perfumery rules as well. So this is their, one of their woody offerings, Bois de Chai. It's like a woody, spicy, potpourri type of scent. And if you're a fan of fragrances like Femité du Bois, Santal Mayuscule, uh, by Serge Lutens, if you like a nice unisex, gender neutral, woody fragrance, then this would be something that you enjoy. For me, this becomes a nice second skin, and I really like it now, you know, during the months where we're getting into warmer territory, but I'm not quite at the full on citrus blast fragrances yet. Um, this is a very lovely, enchanting second skin type of woody fragrance. Next, we have a fragrance for the Daring Leather Lovers. Um, if you know me, I do like a bold scent. I like a muscle fragrance. I like to feel the presence of what it is that I'm wearing. I don't like forgetting that I'm wearing my perfume. I wanna smell it. The reason why I sprayed it on is so that I can enjoy it all day long. And this one absolutely fits the bill. This is an extra. I think it's 33% perfume oil in this one, handmade. Motif Olfactif um, is a artisan brand, but they're available online. And this is one of my favorite leathers of the moment. I only use maybe one or two sprays. I've also used a sample before this, um, but it is just a straightforward cowboy leather, slightly smoky. Um, I've been trying to think why I have this obsession with leather, and I think it's because I used to ride horses, and I love the smell of a good horse saddle, and that animalic, um, that whole environment of being in the horse riding world, just, I think that I just get triggered back to when I smell a good leather, and this one is a good leather. A good dark leather, very realistic, and my mouth is watering just looking at it. I want to spray it right away. <laughs> I'm going to talk about a few fragrances that are on the fresh side because we are coming into the warmest part of the year for this part of the world. And my favorite Neroli, I think that I can proudly say that now, is this one. Flamenco Neroli by L'Orchestre Parfum. <laughs> I love this Neroli fragrance. It is a Neroli with interest. I like my fragrances not to be so straightforward and simple that you just smell one note for the most part. And this is an Aroli that has some smoky, very slightly though, very subtle, slightly smoky aspects, um, very subtle underpinnings of other notes, but it is pretty much a straightforward Neroli fragrance. Neroli is not the same as Petit Gain, and it's not the same as Orange Blossom. Orange Blossom is a floral. Neroli is more green. And it is just so refreshing. Honestly, if I keep this in a cold atmosphere and I spray this on on a hot day, that's like, that's a game changer, okay? <laughs> that lifts you up so well. And this one I will wear even in the evening time on a warmer day as well because it is a classy Neroli. I feel like it's so hard to get Neroli to not just smell spa-like, but to actually smell elevated and classy. And this one does the job for me. Next, we have Jasmine and Tangerine by Atkinson's. This is an old heritage brand from London. This is one of the things that I love about living here is that we have so many 
heritage perfume brands and this is one of my favorites uh, this is just a jasmine a citrusy jasmine so fresh floral and just a very nice out of shower scent for me it makes you smell clean makes you smell you know like you have your hygiene proper and it's very pretty it's very pretty and subtle and i would say that also you know men try out a nice subtle floral i love a floral on a man but i wear this one myself so jasmine and tangerine not much more to say about it pretty simple straightforward fresh jasmine next amongst my freshies we have rosendo mateo number one this is bergamot tea leaf sandalwood and this is a straight up solid cologne type fragrance this brand gets a lot of hype because of number five from the line and i'm going to do a full line review of this because others in the line are also uh, quite nice and this one yeah it's just that straight up bergamot with a little hint of tea leaf i don't get much sandalwood in this fragrance it's mainly a bergamot fragrance for me uh with that little leafy aspect and yeah, just a nice, easy grab-and-go fragrance where you can just spray abundantly and not think too much about it. You just smell nice. I've also been enjoying this entire spring. I've been wearing um, en passant, like doing a spray or two almost daily. And this is <laughs> like the only Frédéric Mal specimen that I have. I'm probably going to get some, like I've said this before, I'm probably going to get some full bottle of something. But this is a lilac fragrance walking past a watery lilac bush. The reason why I'm mentioning this again is also I'm on the lookout for another lilac fragrance. So if you know any lilac fragrances that are very realistic, that give you that outdoorsy feel, then do let me know because I would like something else after this one. But I don't necessarily think that I could get through a full bottle of this one, but it's very, very nice and uplifting. Next, we have another dark fragrance, and I mean dark. This is dark animalic goodness under my skin by francesca bianchi it might make your skin crawl if you do not like this fragrance if you love it though it's going to bring out the animal in you you're going to get primal it's sexual am i allowed to say that on youtube it's sensual <laughs> and i just do one spray of this one spray on the chest and that's it i'm also afraid that it's going to dye my light clothing because it is so dark and juice and it's like natural so i wear this with darker clothing and I do my one spray on the chest and this scent just rises up into my nostrils and it makes me very happy. Another reason why I only do one spray is because it's not one that everyone is going to appreciate. So I absolutely wear this one for myself. But yeah, this is dark animalic goodness. It's furry, it's purry, it makes you wanna go Rrr. It's, yeah, it's good. In the animalic territory, I am going to share a fragrance that I have recently purchased from Eris Eri Parfum. Uh, this is Mabette. So this is a small brand and they have their fragrances created by Antoine Lee, who is a perfumer who I really appreciate because he takes risks. I like a perfumer who takes risks, who knows that not everyone is going to love what he or she creates like you just can't create a one-size-fits-all i don't like one-size-fits-all fragrances for the most but part my bet is a animalic jasmine it's not uh like alcott sergeoff animalic jasmine it's not a, a poopy oud it is a animal in the same sense that under my skin would be described as animalistic like actual animalic skin smells like skin that is worn it smells like you know how you love the smell of a person that you're intimate with like you should enjoy their natural smell as well it's like that kind of animalistic um it's also furry animalistic but this one just blew me away upon first scent and i had to just get a full bottle but i am still now trying to take a step back and figure out how wearable I find this fragrance to be. I, I think that it is a really in your face, beautiful fragrance, but you have to be in the right mindset to wear it and it will simply just take your breath away. But try Eris. This brand is for those of you who are looking for something daring, out of the ordinary, pushing the envelope. And this, yeah, this can be highly, highly sensual if you are into it. The next fragrance, I'm not sure if it will come as a surprise to you, 
but I have actually been enjoying Alexandria the Third by Serjov more than Alexandria the um, Second. I think it could be that there's more of a rose inside this fragrance, so I love that rose and oud combination melange. But this is just a powerful creature. This lets people know who's boss and it just lifts my spirits. It just makes me feel powerful, acknowledged. And if I'm feeling extra fine, I will add Dead of Night on top of it, which is a animalic oud. So there's animalic oud in this one. If I want to amp that up, I'll add Dead of Night. You do not have to use Dead of Night. You can use any other fragrance that is an animalic oud. One that I got that is really amazing from Dubai is Elite Oud. This one costed like nothing compared to what these other Western Ouds cost, but it gives you the same effect. It's just that animalic Oud that is straightforward. And I just add that on top and then I have this, wow, <laughs> this veil, this otherworldly veil when you live in the West. Next, we have a creamy floral fragrance. This is Noix de Tubereuse by Miller Harris. This brand is actually quite lovely. If you're looking for a nice signature scent as well, this is a brand that does office appropriate, daytime appropriate, yes, yet also interesting, yet also nighttime friendly. And this one is such a creamy, warm, balmy tuberose fragrance. I'm actually obsessed with the dry down of it. It just becomes so creamy, you know, like, it is slightly nutty. There is a uh, tonka bean in here and vanilla and amber that gives it that bombiness to it. So if this combination sounds good to you, then you will absolutely love this fragrance. I just find it extremely attractive. Um, but tuberose, as you know, sticks out like a sore thumb. So <laughs> either you love tuberose or you do not. But yeah, this is a really nice creamy white floral that tuberose lovers would enjoy. Next, we have another phenomenal fragrance. This is by the brand Siro. This is Chevalier de la Nuit. And this fragrance I was immediately drawn to. I tried this at Javoy here in London. Javoy is still one of my top fragrance boutiques. I think it still may be my top fragrance boutique just because the service there is so great. The staff is knowledgeable. They give you all the samples that you want. I really wish more places did so much in the customer service area. So shout out to Javoy. But this one is very reminiscent of Coro Mandel by Chanel. So all the people who are familiar with Coro Mandel will immediately have that link when they smell this fragrance. But this to me is more wearable. It's easier to reach. Coro Mandel feels more like a treat to me. I have the parfum and I wear it like evening times when I'm wearing my robe at home and I'm trying to feel bougie for myself. But this one I like to reach for on a more frequent basis. I think the reason is that this one doesn't have that white chocolate Moorish aspect that Cole Mandel has. This is a nice patchouli that is resinous and yeah, just very, very classy. So check this one out if you haven't already. Next, I've been reaching for my light incense of choice. It is Passage d'Enfer by L'Artisan Parfumeur. I love this brand. I love their old bottles. They have been reformulated. They were bought by a large group, so the fragrances have slightly changed, but I do always go on a hunt for these on eBay. I shouldn't be telling you guys this because I don't want these bottles to disappear, but all of the old L'Artisan Parfumeur bottles, I'm always on the hunt for because they were just better back then. Um, Passage d'Enfer, there is a uh, more extreme version that's now out. I have not tried the current extreme version of this, but this is a very light churchy incense. If you want just a light veil of that cold frankincense, um, I really like using this on warmer days. We're having lots of sunny days right now in London, and if you want to smell a little bit more interesting in warmer weather, it's nice to have a cooling incense fragrance on, I think. Um, so yeah, this is an EDT. It does not last incredibly long. It does not project incredibly strongly, but it is one that I wear for myself and I know that I'm wearing it and I feel it and the beauty of the dry down is just amazing to me. So a nice light incense option for those of you who like incense or if you're trying to get into incense fragrances, this would be a really good entry level incense fragrance to try.
Then last but not least, we have a vintage find. I don't often talk about vintage finds on this channel because I feel like everyone just wants to know about what's new, what are the new brands releasing, all of that. Just let me know if I'm wrong about this because then I'll start featuring more of my vintage finds. But in this list, I thought I would just talk about this one. This is Kalesh and this is the perfume oil of Kalesh. So it's a vintage one and I've enjoyed dabbing this one. This only arrived like a couple of days ago, but it just brings me to that old world glamour, which I really enjoy. This was the first feminine marketed fragrance by Hermes. Hermes is probably my favorite designer brand out there. And this is just a classic aldehydic floral bouquet with a little bit of bite with that oak moss to it. So I think that it could be unisex as well. I actually really like 24 uh, Faubourg by Hermes on a gentleman, on a well-dressed, mature man. And I think this one could actually do the same as well, but this, this just makes me feel like a glamorous woman. And yeah, love it. So there you have it, guys. The fragrances that I have been reaching for as of late, the fragrances that I have been gravitating towards, that my soul has wanted to wear, and I hope that you enjoyed this video, maybe made some new discoveries. Let me know what you thought about this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.